Hello and welcome to my latest video and this one's going to be of the budget BOAC airport truck it's one of the scissor lift type box fans that they use for loading meals etc and stuff onto aircraft and airports there's a similar one here in operation on Concord, I'm guessing at Heathrow. Although that's based on a forward decal, decab truck. And I got this in a box I bought of spare parts. And I noticed I thought, yeah, I could build something out of that. Because the basic truck with it. It didn't have a full set of wheels and the doors are missing off it. But I thought it'll build up nice even without the doors. I may look out for a set of doors for it or I may even scratch build some at a later date. But anyhow, here we go. I'm centre punching the rivet at the bottom because unusually they must have used a different system to match box and corgi because it's not rounded. They're similar to them. And there we go, that's off. Those are the original wheels, I don't use the original wheels. They've gone into my spurs box instead. I've not a clue what tie this was. It's a British tie and it's a template bit. Um, plastic wheels. But they were the right diameter and they looked okay on it. So I thought they'll do. They came in the spurs box with the truck. And here I'm doing the caustic bath of doom. And there, did you notice my lens steams up? So we have a move out of the way. Wipe the lens. Chuck some more caustic in. It didn't shift it all as it goes. It shifted enough. There was still some orange. Strangely, there were orange paints underneath the silver. never used it, used, seen it used as an undercut, so I'm wondering if it was intended as a, another airline's truck. The only real one I can think of in orange in the 60s, possibly 70s, was Braniff International. So I wonder if it may have been for Braniff, because EasyJet weren't around back then. Anyway, here we go, on my brush in the actual ca cabin chassis. I sandpapered it a little bit to get rid of the roughest flaws. Because <laughs> it was a fairly rough casting, to be honest. There's still bits in it, but it adds to the character of the build. And here we are, I'm putting some primer on. And I actually mix the colours myself for this. I mix some Vallejo steel with Vallejo silver to dull down the silver a little bit. I considered it a bit too bright. Here it's going into the silver, I think. I think it's already at the bright. I'll be spraying into silver here. As I said, it's had a uh, mixture of two Vallejo colours. There we are still. Oh, you not here we are with the cab. Cabin chassis. And I mixed the colours for this also. I used Vallejo Ivory. And 
it might have been a revel colour, I think. No. Possibly a revel colour. Oh, no. It was Vallejo. Hang on, wait a minute. Let me think. It was one of Vallejo's blues. I can't think what it was, no. I wouldn't mind. It's an artist colour blue as well. And here I'm spraying the base. Just doing the base black. That's from a car spray. Uh, I'm trying to think what it was. Oh, bumper paint. Here I'm putting on the decals. Just getting rid of the excess water underneath them. And patting them down onto the actual truck body. The decals were from Black Square decals. I find them to be very good. One thing to bear in mind if you're ever restoring one and you get Black Square decals, you have to cut them pretty much up to the edge of the decal you use you're using because they're all printed on one sheet and there's no separation like model decals they're all in one big sheet so I say if you soaked it all the decals have come off together so you have to cut round the perimeter of the one you intend using <coughs> And here I'm using my bold pole solid polish. It's a plastic grade, a fine grade. You can get finer ones as well, like Jewelers Rouge. Well, this is plenty enough to bring the plastic up. All I'm doing is getting rid of a few scratches. Um, making it nice and clear again. It weren't in too bad condition in the first place. And here we go again on the windscreen area. There were a few scratches and a bit dirty. So it takes them all off and buffs it up. And here we go, as Marty says. I'm happy with that. And here. I'm dropping in the window unit. And just getting ready to put the base on. I end up super gluing it on. Because it was too shallow to drill. Too shallow to drill and tap. I could have done, but I've had end, I'd have ended up with the screw sticking out at top, and I've had to cut it down. If I thought about it beforehand, I could have done the work beforehand, cut it down so I wouldn't have marked the paint. But hey ho, it's done now anyway. Glue worked as well. As somebody else says, I forget who it is that says. They never seem to click down once they've been painted. <laughs> and there we are. Putting on the actual wheels. They're a cheaper set of plastic wheels. We know, well they have tyres but it's all moulded as well in plastic as opposed to the proper budgie wheels that was a wheel and tyre and here I'm putting on the rear ones there we are they just a push in there we go got its wheels Here we are, I've painted the centres of them 
It's a lot like the hub caps. And rolls very well. Rolls nicely and it's nice and even on the flat surface. So there's no twist in the chassis or anything. And here's the rear body sizzle lift. It actually works, although it doesn't stop up on its own. Brad probably needs to take it off and tighten the arms, but I'm not messing with it because of age. I'm happy enough as it is. Can do that to demonstrate it. And anyway, here we go with some glamour shots. I decided to take some photos because it's quite heavy as it goes for me turntable. Start off with front view. The original doesn't have the headlights painted and the bumper, but I've done it on this. Adds a bit more visual interest. Um, looks a bit more pleasing. And on to the next shot, which is the three quarters view, and it does look quite pretty with that view. It all goes together nicely. The wheels don't look too bad with it. I think the chunkier ones, the budgies, would look better, but and it would look good with the doors on, but hey ho, oh, we can't have everything. It's a fairly, it's a reasonably rare model, and the doors are reasonably tricky to find, so here yeah, we have a side view. And I'm very impressed with the decals, they go on nice. Oh, oh, excuse me, yawning. I bought a few sets of decals from Black Square now, and I can honestly say they're a quality product. I wouldn't hesitate to buy off him again. Uh, nearly ready to flip over to the next photo. There we go and got the one singular small rear BOAC decal on the tail there. And he goes back really to the golden age of air travel. The BOAC livery was classic, it looked really nice. On her craft, it was a classic livery. And big A, B E A were as well. B O A C stood for British Overland Airline Company, I think it was. And B E A stood for British European Airways. And the two merged to make what is known as British Airways today. And the British Airways livery is still nice, but not as nice as BOACs and BEAs. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you have, Thank you very much for subscribing and keeping in touch with my channel. And all that remains to say is, stay safe people and have a good time or day, whatever, whatever you decide to do. Bye for now and catch you later.